The European Union has been accused of violating freedom of speech after it ordered a ban on a number of Iranian satellite channels, including Press TV. Press TV viewers have condemned the move as illegal and hypocritical. In the comments posted on the news channel's website, they've also accused the European Union of double standards. Here's a look at some of the comments. There is the freedom of speech and press in Europe. Hypocrites. When it is against Islam, then it's freedom of press and speech in Europe. Lift the ban now. Shame on the European Commission. They who have just been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize are now suppressing freedom of speech and expression, which are essential tools to report on breach of peace and on warmongers. This illegal, illogical and uncivilized measure by Europe indicates its serious desperation and panic in facing the growing influence of press TV across the world. Never was there freedom of expression in the US or the EU. Only selective loose talk is branded as freedom of expression. Press TV has launched a petition on Facebook to save the news channel across Europe. On Monday, European satellite provider Utelsat stopped the broadcast of several Iranian satellite channels and radio stations on the order of the European Commission. The EU is claiming that the move is aimed at punishing Iran for violating human rights. But experts believe that Press TV has raised the anger of certain European countries for covering thorny issues, including anti-austerity protests. Franklin Lamb is an international lawyer. He joins us from Beirut to shed his light on what has occurred in terms of this ban. Well, Franklin Lamb, first of all, as an international lawyer, why don't you tell us Iran has had long-term contracts with this uh, satellite provider and they have broken it. Isn't that illegal? Yeah, it is. May I just begin by uh, saying that I cannot approve, uh, improve on the comments that you listed there. Every one of them is accurate, from the double standards uh, to the violation of freedom of, uh, freedom of speech and hypocrisy. Fortunately, there's a remedy. There's more than one remedy. But will there be the political will uh, to go after these remedies? For example, the International uh, T Telecommunication Union uh, has 193 members. It's one of the oldest examples of international cooperation. It was founded in 1865. Um, it has jurisdiction uh, completely relevant to the satellite channels today. The aggrieved parties, Press TV, Iran, and others who are signing your petition should petition the International Telecommunication uh, Communication Union because there's a remedy there. You, you have the right to have this unless they can show that you have violated one of the 18 clauses of that treaty. And there's no evidence that that's happened. Plus, there's a remedy at the International Court of Justice demanding an advisory opinion. Now, this will take a while. This will not happen in a week or, or, or a month. But it will establish, uh, you know, the clarity and, and, and the right and the wrong of the action. Obviously, as your uh, comments uh, posted uh, uh, declare, you know, this is another form of sanction, psychological warfare, another part of this Cold War between Washington and, and Tel Aviv and Tehran uh, and their, their allies. But the, the frustration is that there is a remedy and will it be taken? There is a view that international law is co-opted by the West and it's politicized. Part of that's true. But there are uh, many, many hundreds of instances every day, thousands, that international law works very well, from the aviation to the movement of people in general, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's really on those of us who complain about this, rightly complain, that we go to the International Telecommunications uh, Union or the International Court of Justice and the UN and, the, and NAM and the rest and demand a, a repeal of, of this action and demand to know what is the case and what is the justification under the treaty. So it's all about law. Domestic law, municipal law, bilateral law, and the breach contract between uh, Tehran and those they've, the companies they've signed with, but also it's a serious violation of international law that affects every country. Again, there's 193 members. So uh, I think it's a challenge, it's an opportunity. 
uh, to let's straighten this out and let's do it through uh, international law. And, and quickly, uh, like you said, on what side of the coin is the uh, uh, relationship between, uh, lack of it, between Iran and uh, the United States, of which uh, perhaps there's uh, that political uh, pressure that's being placed on Iran. But on the other side of the coin, we could also look at uh, Franklin Lamb. What is going on in Europe, for example, in terms of these uh, demonstrations that we see? Uh, also, Europe has been cited now uh, that it's been on the decay in terms of uh, freedom of speech and uh, even human rights. Yeah. Uh, not to mention, for yeah. example, how the coverage of Syria uh, has been uh, uh, so far uh, in terms of uh, certain channels uh, promoting the other side, which is not the truth that is on the reality on the ground. Uh, add all these uh, factors together, is that also a reason behind it that uh, they want to shape the viewers based on uh, how uh, they want things to be seen as opposed to Press TV? And also, doesn't that show that Press TV has been successful? Yeah. Absolutely. The bottom line, you're quite right. It's political, 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 uh, first and foremost. Uh, and that's what all this, uh, all this is about. You know, the EU passed those sanctions uh, uh, this week, uh, Monday, against Syria. Again, it's just, uh, and, and Iran, just building up layer upon layer of sanctions, uh, political maneuvering such as this. You cannot justify this action under any notion of freedom of speech. The same freedom of speech which uh, three weeks ago had to be defended to blaspheme against the prophet uh, and Islam, uh, that was freedom of speech. Where's the free freedom of speech here? You cannot argue your way out of that proposition. It's transparent, it's clear, it's settled as a matter of law, and now it's those in, of us in the international community who respect uh, the rights of freedom of speech you have to use this as an example, make an issue out of it, pursue it in political and economic and legal uh, terms until we get it reversed. I think it's that clear. Very good. Thank you very much, Franklin Lamb there, international lawyer from Beirut. Uh -huh.